Welcome back everyone to the Advanced Laser Defender tutorial series. We're going to pick up right where we left off from the last video and start making an animated health bar that will uh, change its uh, color and whatever else you need it to change when your player loses or gains health. So to get started, I'm going to just make a quick uh, a couple of fundamental changes uh, to the player and enemy prefabs. I don't like that the player himself dies in only two hits, so I'm going to change that up to 300 health because I believe the enemy laser does 100 damage. Let's just check. Uh, over here. Or is it? Yes, there it is, damage 100. And similarly, I don't like that the enemy dies in only one hit, so I'm going to up the enemy health as well to 200 because I believe the player laser also does 100 damage. Let's just check. Yes, it does, 100. So now the enemy should die in two hit, the player should die in three. That's just for me, but at the same time, it will kind of help with playtesting for this uh, and this video and some of the next. So we're going to do an animated health bar by using a slider UI component. Now, you haven't seen sliders so far in this Udemy course. Maybe you've seen them elsewhere, but if you haven't, just go up to Game Object, UI, and add a slider and then you're probably it's going to appear under the canvas so just double click on it to see where it shows up and there it is so i'm going to drag it into the upper right corner of the canvas somewhere around here i'm going to just move the score over a little bit and the first thing we're going to do is probably change the size of this slider because if we take a look at it here it might be okay but i want my health bar to be a little bigger and more prominent than that so to do that, I'm just going to up the uh, overall height of the slider. Oops. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do it through there. I'm going to change the scale. That's probably a bit of a safer option here. So what, what's a good scale? Well, let's just try one and a half by three. Okay, that's good. And that handle looks a little wonky, but that's okay because we're not going to keep that handle. Now, if you look on the left side, you can change the slider, uh, various slider options. And what we're going to be uh, changing is, I believe, this fill area. And I want the color to be either a red or a blue, just to symbolize that we have health. So that's good. And the background area is, well, I'm just going to show you what it is. Uh, if you move the handle, it's that color that appears underneath. So we do want the background to be a white or a black, just something to show that you've, your player's lost health, but I want the foreground to be a nice red or blue. So you can go ahead and play with these options and you can even change the sprites for the slider so you can have some fun with it and design it to your heart's content. Uh, as for this handle, I actually don't want this handle to be showing up. Uh, so there's a few ways of doing this. I could just delete the handle UI component altogether or uncheck it up here. But I've tried that before and it's just given me some weird graphical issues. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the handle there, but I'm just going to turn the alpha all the way down, which essentially makes it invisible. Uh, also here under this under the slider, we want to de-check this box that says interactable, which essentially means I can no longer move it myself with the mouse during gameplay, which is what you want because you don't want the player to be setting their own health. Uh, lastly, you might see that there's this a uh, weird area behind here where the slider handle was hiding it before. Uh, so there's probably a better way to do this, but for now I'm just going to change this simply. I'm going to do some resizing here. So I'm going to lower the alpha on this red so I can kind of see uh, what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to play around with the uh, various widths on here. And I'm going to try to come up with some numbers that uh, make sense and I'm just trying to remember where uh, scale I want to change the X change that to about uh, just make it 0.85 and it's going to be some fiddling around to get it into a proper place uh, so this fill area uh, what should we do here um, change the right I've noticed this doesn't update properly right away, so there's really going to be some fiddling around. But I've already kind of played with it and figured out some of the numbers. So I wrote them down here on my other screen. And minus 3.35. Oops. Minus 3. Point what? Minus 3.35 seems to be kind of good for uh, that value over there. And 7 seems to work over here. 
so I, I did cheat just by, look, by playing around with that in advance, but that kind of works. That gives us a nice looking health bar up there. Uh, and next I'm just going to reset the alpha all the way back up for the red so it appears nice and bright. Okay, so that creates a cool looking health bar in the upper right corner here. Now let's add a uh, script to it. We're just going to call this script very creatively health bar. Go ahead and create and add that. And to be tidy, we will drag and drop that into the scripts folder right away. And then we'll go ahead and open that in MonoDevelop. So go ahead and open that now. Okay, what do we have here? So we have a blank script, and first and most obviously, we are going to need to get a reference to this. But before we even do that, I caught my own error, we're going to need to, because it's a UI element, we're going to need to add using Unity Engine.UI up here at the top. And now we can go private slider and just call it, again, very creative name, slider. And under the start method, we're going to need to get a reference to it. So slider equals get component slider. And now that's going to allow us to change the value. Now we're not going to need the update method for this script. So we're going to get rid of that default comment. And we can uh, call this method um, set health. Because what we're going to need to do is the slider is going to need to understand how much health the player has been uh, taking how much health the player has. And in order for the slider to understand this, it's going to need to take in a variable. So it's going to take in a variable called current health. And it's going to be a float, so it can have decimal places, uh, even, the, even though it's... Uh, our, wow, I'm losing my train of thought here. Even though our health is usually an integer, I'm just gonna play it safe and give it a, call it a float anyway. And also up here, uh, we're going to need a pub, um, uh, no, we're gonna need a, another private. And this time it's gonna be a static float. And this just comes from experience of trying different things out with health values and seeing what works and what doesn't. And we're gonna call this max health. So we're gonna have two health variables, one for current health and one for max health. Now, where is the player going to get this uh, value from? Well, first of all, I'm gonna actually call this a public void set health because it's going to come from our player controller script. So we're gonna have to go ahead here and open up our player controller script as well and start getting a reference to that too. And I need to stop knocking things down here on my table. That would also be very helpful. Okay, so similarly, we're going to get a reference to that health bar script in this player controller script. And we're gonna call this private health bar, health bar, and under the start function, which is down here for some reason, should be up, it should be the top one, but it's down here, I don't know why. We're going to say, oops, health bar equals game object dot find object of type. And now it is, oops, wrong type of brackets. I've been rusty working on too much 3D modeling. Okay, so now our health bar has an actual reference to the health bar. And what are we going to do? Well, at the very start, we actually want to tell the health bar how much health our player has. Because this number is a variable, it can change. So we're just going to let uh, the system do that by itself in the background. So down here, we're just going to type... Actually, you know what? I should put these together for consistency. Under here, we are going to type health bar dot set health. And we are just going to pass through the player's health. Use the right type of brackets. Don't be like me, or do be like me once I get it right, but don't be like me the first time where I keep putting in the wrong types of brackets. Now this isn't the only time we're going to be setting the player's health. We're also going to be setting the player's health whenever the player takes damage. So you can just go ahead and copy this line of code, which I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better, even if it prevents me from seeing my own stuff. And uh, where does our player get hit? Uh, under trigger enter 2D. This is where he's having 
collisions with the missiles. So we're also going to uh, tell the health bar what our player's health is whenever he's taking damage as well as at the very start. So make sure you have the, you're doing that both here where he takes damage and at the very start. Okay, and once you've done those two things, then we can head back over to our health bar script. So now let's think about how we're going to actually uh, get our player to recognize or our health bar to recognize the, uh, the current health value and how to do something about it. So very simply, what we're going to have to do is two things. We're going to need to change the uh, current health levels and we're going to need to do that based off of a value because a slider is always a value between 0 to 1 so we're going to have to do some conversions. Now I am terrible at math but even I figured out a simple way to do this. So first of all we want to uh, come up with a way to determine what the max health is. Now we can just simply say max health is equal to current health. But we don't want to do this every time. We only want it to, to do this when we're telling it to do this. Um, and I know we're going to be doing some things later with giving health packs, but for now we just want uh, this to happen at the very start of the game. So we're going to introduce another variable up here, and we're going to call this a private, uh, no, sorry, a public boolean. A public bool, and we're going to call this setting max health. And by default, that's going to be equal to true. Now, I actually don't want to. This is going to be public because it needs to be. It might be need to, needed to be accessed from elsewhere, but we don't want it to be accessed from the inspector. So we're also just going to type in here, uh, hide an in inspector with square brackets, and that basically means uh, even though it's set to public, it cannot be accessed over here in the uh, editor for the slider. And let's just, I just want to hit play just to make sure that I haven't done any errors. Okay, it's still running. It doesn't hurt every now and then when you're typing a bunch of code just to hit the play button, make sure that uh, everything is working so you know that your errors are up to that point. So it's not working yet, it's not doing anything, but we're on the right track. Okay, so now we want to make use of this variable and say if setting max health, then only in this case can we actually set the max health. That makes sense. And then we want to uh, turn setting max, oops, did I type something right, wrong here? Setting max health should be equal to false now. Why was it giving me an error? That's throwing me off. Okay, so we're basically saying if max health is equal to it, this, this variable is right now, it's only going to be true at the start of the game. We're going to change this later, but I'm just setting this up to be implementing some good practices. So we're only going to set the max health at the very start of the game. Uh, now, what we can do is we can introduce another variable, and we'll just call this one, well, I'm actually going to name it up here. We're going to say private float slider value. And we are going to say our slider value is equal to our current health divided by our max health. And just to test this is working, I'm also going to print the slider value. And this should give us a number between 0 and 1. So let's just keep an eye on the inspector here. And it's printing 1. And let's see what happens if I take damage. Come on, take damage. I can do this. Get it. Okay, there it is. 0.6667. So that looks like it's working. Uh, okay, so we're almost there. We know we're getting the right numbers. Now we actually want the slider value to change based on that. And how are we going to do that? Well, very simply, we already have a reference to the slider. So all we need to do is type slider.value is equal to slider value. And one more time, we're going to play and watch what happens. Ah, uh, no reference exception. See, this is why we check our stuff often. Now I'm getting an error. Why am I getting an error? Slider.value. Why is it giving me an error on this line here? Okay, sorry about that. I had to poke around a little bit and figure out where this error was. Uh, it's actually something very dumb. 
I did not put the script on the slider object itself. I put it on this fill area, which is why I was having problems. So I'm just going to uh, remove that component from the fill, air, fill area and reattach it to the slider itself. Uh, health bar. And now let's try to run that and see if it works. Okay, I can move around. See, try to take some damage. Sometimes it's harder to take damage when you actually want to. Oh, and look at that, the health bar works. Very cool. Okay, but it's not animated. That's the only thing. I said I would make an animated health bar and so far I've given you a health bar that just changes by itself, which is cool, but not what I said I would do. So let's tackle that object next. Uh, so to do this, instead of just setting the value, we're gonna start subtracting the value. So we're not going to need uh, this, this function here anymore. But what we are going to do is we're going to do an invoke repeating, which you have already covered in this particular 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 module. I'm going to call this change slider value. If you remember, you when you're doing an invoke or an invoke repeating, you put the name of the method within quotation marks, and I'm going to give it a default call value of zero point whole bunch of zeros one, and then I'm going to call it every 0.01 seconds. And again, this is just through some play testing. I figured out that this kind of works. And I don't want that there. There we go. Okay, now we let's actually write this method here for a uh, chain called sli change slider value. So void change slider value. And what are we going to put inside of it here? Well, we're going to need another if statement, and we're going to say if the slider dot value is greater than or equal to slider value, which we've already determined, then what are we going to do? We are going to take the slider value and subtract it, and subtract it by what? Well, we haven't actually defined that yet, so let's go define that up here, and let's, tur let's turn this into a public variable so we can change it if we need to in the inspector. Uh, public float speed of health change. And by default, I'll set this to 0.01f, and we'll try this out. And now we're going to subtract it by this speed of health change number. Now, this is going to basically what we're saying here is if our sliders, if the value of our slider is greater than our uh, current health, the d ratio that we've already determined, just subtract it. But if it is equal to or less than, in other words, else, what are we going to do? Well, we could print just for some play testing, but in this case, I'm just going to say cancel invoke. And it is a method, so you need those two parentheses here. And let's just try this out one more time, see if this works. Take some damage. Take some damage. There we go. Oh, and do you see that? Look at that. It's kind of fast, but so you can change those numbers if you want. But basically what we have done here is we've used a slider to create an animated health bar. Uh, so that works really, really nicely. Uh, it's actually a lot better than the method I came around the first time, which was just having a whole bunch of different sprites and updating the sprite whenever I was within a certain health parameter. Uh, no, this works really, really well, and it's, uh, it's cool, it's animated, and it works. So, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think. Take care.